Hey kids, so I am going to show you today how to do a cool 3D mouth of this giant anglerfish. Think uh, Finding Nemo, that fish that came out of the dark with a little kind of light bulb thing on its head. Uh, so we're going to do our own version of that. I'm going to show you some cool ways to do it. Just get a pencil, um, a sharpie if you can, and an eraser. Those are the main things you're going to want to do for this. If you don't have a sharpie, um, Crayola black marker, just any dark marker or pen you can find and just find a good pencil that you want to use. That's the main thing. If it's just pencil, it's still cool. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to make uh, our cool 3D mouth. Oh, and before we do, I just want to remind you, ooh, I've got a piece on doing the scales that I'm going to add to this in the texture uh, video. So go back to that if you want to get back. you got to do it. But here's our first move. We're going to do the mouth first, which I think is really important. So we're going to do this big upside down U. And we're going to kind of have it lean a little bit to the right here. So you can see I can use this program to kind of tilt it afterwards, but just a little bit of lean to the right is fine. We want to look like it's almost wide straight open, like it's huge. And then we're going to do a right side up U connected to the two parts down here in the bottom. But we're going to lean this one also to the right side there. Um, and we're going to lean it a lot more this time. So watch this. Oof big lean. It's almost like this is like a big um, tombstone and this is like the shadow of the tombstone underneath. You can think of it any way you want or you can just think of it as two opposing views that connect at the ends. Okay, so that was the hardest part right there. If you need to redraw that a few times, erase it, get it right, that's fine. It does not need to be this vertical. It can lean a lot more. As long as really they connect, it's going to be fine. Okay, so the next part, we're going to add the teeth to our awesome anglerfish. So this is the mouth right here. This is the inside of the mouth, this is the outside of the mouth. So let me show you how we can do this. We're gonna add some zigzags on to the mouth here. I'm gonna do the top teeth first, just zigzag it a little bit. And then when you get to the other side right here, what I like to do actually, is I like to kind of lean the teeth, whoops, and have a couple that kind of stick out a little bit, just to give it a little more of that three dimensionality. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the bottom here, except obviously at a different angle. So we're going to do the zigzags in the bottom here, and we get down to the bottom. And the more kind of like pointy and weird and like one after the other different sizes you do, I think the better here. And you'll notice that sometimes you might overlap a little bit. Like let's say that I was doing a tooth. I'm actually going to go back and erase this one. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's say that I'm, I don't like this tooth, or even the tooth before it, because it kind of doesn't lean out of the mouth enough, and that doesn't make enough of the 3D. If you do have teeth that lean out of the mouth, now watch this one. Boom, let's have that tooth like really stick out. Ah, it's a little too far. Like that, okay? And now you see we've got that overlapping from where we drew the mouth before. Well, that's exactly where your eraser is super, super handy. So, have your eraser handy. Get in there, erase that line. And then, let's say you did like me, like watch this. Oh no, I really screwed up that tooth. Well, now you go back in with your pencil, and you go back over your line, and you can kind of smooth out those problems. Maybe it's a marker you're going over it with, and that's fine. I'm going to add one more tooth over here. Ooh, I love how weird and jagged this looks. So wonderful mouth, awesome stuff. Now we're actually really quickly going to add the inside of the mouth, the shadow going back. So what I want to do is down here on the very left side, right about where the teeth kind of just poke into, I'm going to make that little kind of tombstone shape right there, okay, or like a, a curved doorway. And then I'm going to make a flat bottom to it, and then I'm going to fill that in black. Okay, that is going to be the very back of my mouth. What I like to do from there is just to echo that bit of a curve, and that makes kind of like the ribbing on the inside of the mouth right here. It makes it actually look like really cool. It's got that really nice texture, kind of like the roof of your mouth. If you ever feel the roof of your mouth or your tongue, there's like little bumps and ridges. And we can actually do kind of like a long tongue sticking out right here on the bottom. We could do some like little dimples on there to give that a little texture. And then the same kind of ribbing stuff going on here, but just at a different angle for the bottom of the mouth. Good stuff, right? Okay, that's really the mouth right there. Pretty easy, I think. Um, if you got to redraw it a few times, not a big deal. Now let's add those fish lips. Now if you ever insulted somebody with fish lips, understand that that means their lips are like really kind of rigid and uh, bumpy. So I'm going to do one lip right here. I'm just going to add a little kind of hinge on the bottom. I'm the exact same thing coming on this side. Don't call people fish lips, by the way. All right, there we go. That's it. Just adding lips. It's going to be the same kind of curve over. Um, I like to end this one with a flat line on the end just to make it look a little bit more 3D because that's where it would wrap around the other side and you wouldn't be able to see it. And here comes the fish head. 
this is actually easier than you think. Actually, before we do the head, I actually kind of like to do the eye first. So let's add the eye somewhere down here. It's actually going to be really, really low and back further than you expect because the mouth is opening up and sticking out. So we're going to add just this little, I like the little creepy eye right here. Okay, so like a little creepy eye. Let's add a little shine to it. So adding some circles within it that we're going to leave white. Fill in the rest. Nice, creepy little eye. Okay. Now you could go the other way with it. You could, instead of doing a little tiny eye, you could do like the big creepy eye. So kind of like the, the actual anglerfish one because they do have really giant eyes. But I'm going to go, I think, with the the little beady eye for this one. Okay, so you can you can change yours if you'd like to. But let's, let's do the beady eye with the guy right here. All right, so I got my beady eye. It's further down and back than you expect. And now watch this. I'm going to just make these two big curves off the top of the lip up here and the bottom lip down here. And they're going to pinch together just a little bit behind the eye. Now it's actually a little tall. Let's do this. Bring this down a little more. Oh yes, I like that better. We really want to make this fish look like it is all mouth. Now you see that bottom curve it did? I'll do it again for you. Going from the bottom lip and then I'm kind of recurving back. I want to make it look like the bottom of the fish doesn't have a lot of substance to it, so I'm just really sticking it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another kind of curve in at the end right here, and we're going to add this actually relatively large tail considering how tiny the bottom of the body. I like making that kind of a tattered tail by making a zigzag on the back of it. Even have some parts sticking out a little further. You can add that little ribbing texture that we talked about with the fish if you watched the Mermaid and Scale episode that's back just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to add just a little bit of ribbing there. You can add that muscle that's along the tail to kind of show where it is. And then you can also, I think really what adds a lot is adding a little bit of the scales. Now you don't need to do it all over. You can just do kind of a handful of scales here and there where just the shadow happens to catch the edge of them. You can see it. And then if you really want to be accurate with this, why not add a few gills? And then we got to, this is the best part. Here's a little fin on the bottom, just underneath the gills, underneath the eye. We're going to add the little side fin, kind of like Nemo. He's going to have the little tiny fin. Because again, we want to make this fish look like he's all mouth. I'm really digging how he's going so far. So what you might want to do is add kind of a little crest fin or dorsal fin up top. He could be a little shark-like in a sense, but I'm just going to add just a little kind of this rough texture on top by zigzagging my um, lines. And then it, it would not be an angler fish without that cool bioluminescent light bulb up top that it uses to actually go for other fish. So off the top, right about where that little bit of um, kind of dorsal uh, finness ends, we're going to make that long curving piece. It's going to come out in front of his mouth because that's where he wants to position fish to get attracted to it. Think Marlin back uh, from Finding Nemo. Have it come down with two long parallel lines. And then we're literally going to make kind of like a light bulb shape on the end. Okay? So that's really it. Uh, pretty darn cool in my mind. If you happen to have watercolors, I really suggest after you get all done, here I'll try to find, I know there's a watercolor in here somewhere probably under artistic, watercolor, beautiful. And the cool thing about watercolors um, is that if you do this in marker, like Sharpie, that's permanent, don't do it in Crayola. If you've got a water-based marker, you don't want to do this. But if you got something like that, what we can do is we can add that kind of cool glowing effect with the watercolors, and that just becomes a really neat thing. You know, go heavier around where the actual light bulb thing is, and we get that cool effect of the bioluminescence going on, you know. And that's just a neat thing. And we can kind of add that all around like the end of his lip right here. And watch this. We're going to make him look extra spooky by doing some like deep. Let's get like a deep, deep blue. Make the brush a little bigger. I'm going to go back over here and we're going to add some cool shadows in just a second. I'm going kind of overkill here. At this point, you know, you're done. You can add some cool color to your fish, and I would, but I'm just going to do this fun. Maybe I'll even speed up the video, maybe not. But I'm going to add some cool shadows on my fish. So the further away the part of the fish is from the light, the darker it gets, and the more that it's tilted away. So this part of the fish around the lips is going to be kind of dark. And I'm doing a really sloppy job coloring, but sometimes with watercolors it actually looks cooler if you just kind of splash them on and go at it, especially once you've done that Sharpie. So it'll really stick. And then we gotta get in the mouth here. We gotta do those. I should probably go back and add some orange to the um, the teeth there too. Let them catch the light. That'd be kind of cool. And do a little bit of the shadows on the teeth. 
but the teeth that are sticking out towards the light are really going to catch it. That's going to be cool. Back of the mouth is going to be dark. It's going to be the evil maw. It's about to eat some unsuspecting fish. The eye is going to catch just a little more light than the body because it kind of sticks up a little bit. Your eyes have to. Your eyes gather light. Cool science there. So, fun stuff. Alright, so I'm, I'm just doing a basic job of this. I know it's not that pretty, but you can see adding a little bit of light and shadow really does make a difference. Whoops. Let's just add a little more of the highlights here. Definitely more orange at the end of the teeth. Because that's where that light's going to be shining. At the end of the lips. Catching that light, catching that light. And I love how that is. That just, like, the more you add... A little bit of light to your creation, a little bit of light and dark, a little bit of light and shadow, the more it just really makes it look a lot more engaging. Okay? So you guys can see a really quick and dirty bit of um <laughs> of uh of watercolorness there. But I could keep doing this for quite a while and I'd just be having a good time. So anyways, that's it. That's the coolness of it. That's how you make that angler fish. Um, if you can follow along with that drawing, that's awesome. If you're having trouble, yours doesn't look exactly the same, understand that I'm an art teacher. I have been practicing this quite a bit, so if you're not drawing as well as me, that's actually totally normal. You're practicing, you're getting better. Uh, if you're drawing better than me, then I should probably cry about it, because I've been doing this for a very long time, and apparently I'm not as good as, you know, one of my students. <laughs> so anyways, uh, have an awesome time, guys. Please keep drawing, keep drawing, keep drawing. Um, and I will hopefully get a chance to see you in person soon. Catch you later.